Part one of a complete idiot's everyday carry. Today is gonna to focus mainly on my medical equipment that I carry with me. This is my everyday carry, believe it or not. This is a 511 Rush 72, and this beast weighs 33 pounds. Um, I'm a little different than most, in the words of the immortal Jane Cobb. How many weapons you plan on taking? You only got the two arms. Well, I just get excitable as to choice. like to have my options open. I don't plan on any shooting taking place during this job. Yeah, well, what you plan and what takes place ain't ever exactly been similar. For my medical gear, I chose another 511 bag. It is the Rush Moab 6. And it's a little sling bag, and I chose this bag for a few reasons. I like the fact that it fits comfortably inside of my everyday carry bag. And what I wanted is something that I could easily grab, throw over my shoulder, and run over to a situation if need be. It's definitely a little bigger than what I need it to be, but that just allows me to carry a bit more equipment. And for me, I look at things a little differently than a lot of people, and this is my problem with pre-made, any type of everyday carry kit, uh, medical kit, anything like that. What I feel I need to be prepared for and what you feel you need to be prepared for are probably two very, very different things. My concern is now and always has been my entire family. And the equipment that I carry is for myself and for them. That sounds kind of harsh, but I do have little toss kits that I've made up specifically to help with car accidents, things like that. So I've got several redundancies in this bag because my concern is again for myself, my wife, and my son. So you're gonna see some overlap. Again, most people are gonna call it overkill, but overkill is underrated. The first two things aren't necessarily inside of this bag, but they are working in Congress with it. Uh, it's going to be a Rescue Essential quick litter that I have in a shrink bag, so it really takes up very little space. But I love the idea of having that, should I ever need it. Uh, quick shout out and thank you, 5 Hour Energy. The next thing is going to be a boo boo kit. And this is a pretty extensive one, but again, I've got a rambunctious kid. He's always doing something, always getting himself hurt. And this is nothing more than, well, I guess let's go through it, why not? Bandages, Neosporin, alcohol prep pads, many, many more bandages. Different sizes. Now these really aren't necessarily for the boogle kit. These can be used for several other open working areas. But toe warmers, if you have somebody potentially going into shock, a really misunderstood topic that people can go into shock and have issues when it's 90 degrees outside, 95 degrees outside. Effectively, if it is under 98.6 degrees outside, you have to worry about heat loss on the individual that you're helping. And then crack cold packs. Again, these are really pretty helpful for the day-to-day -day traumas that you're gonna be helping your family with or people around you. This kit gets used infinitely more than what the actual medical kit does. Getting into the actual bag itself now, I swear I'm not trying to make anybody nauseous by continually rotating camera angles. I am very new to all this stuff, so please bear with me. Photography is not a gift that I have. So outside of the bag, I do have a morale patch uh, because I think it's funny. This front flap is just kind of basic necessities that I'm gonna need quickly different sizes of Gorilla Tape. This stuff is duct tape on steroids. Great stuff, you can always find a use for it and never have enough of it. We touched on the topic of heat loss, extra large Marlar blankets. These are great and it's important you understand what these do and what they don't do. And I guess that brings us into a segue of 
get training. Understand the equipment that you have, get trained on it. Don't be the guy that's got the really great medical kit who has no clue how to use it. It's the equivalent of having 10 different guns and have no idea how they work. Don't be that guy. Over here, I have a bottle of sanitizing liquid. X shears. Oh, these are the best shears, in my opinion, you can get. I've got two different sets of hemostats here, a curved and a straight. Tick removal kit. We live in tick country. It's just kind of a part of life, whether it's your dog, whether it's you. It's nice to have it. A Sharpie. I don't know how well that shows up, but there. And then there are a pair of tweezers right here. Again, they don't show up real well, but they're there. These are just cotton swabs, sanitary cotton swabs. Let's see, where do we go next? I'm going to pause this and we're going to spin the bag around. Flipping the bag around and the camera yet again. <laughs> Sorry. Let's check out the back side of the bag. We have a CPR face shield here and here because if you're going to give someone CPR, wear a mask. And here we have two four milligram nasal shots in Narcan and a nice easy access. Extra gloves, extra disinfecting wipes, and an extra face mask. Alright, getting into this little back pocket. Two triangle bandages. These things are millions of uses. You can figure out what to do with them. Slings, you can use them as a pressure dressing. You can use them to wrap someone's head if you need to, if they have a, a scalp injury. These guys just do all sorts of things and there's no reason not to have them. I've got them vacuum sealed down. When I vacuum seal things, I put a little bit of Gorilla Tape on for a pull tab. I don't know how well this is gonna show up. Then I cut the bag just slightly. I don't pierce where the seal is, but then this gives you a really good area to pull and it opens easily when you need it. Different burn dressings and this one's second skin. This is a water dressing and these are petroleum. <sighs> these can be used for several different things. You can use them as a chest seal should, God forbid, you need that. You can use it as burn dressing. You can use the package it came in for an additional chest seal. So much of this stuff can carry over into multiple uses and that's kind of why I have it. I've got things that overlap, but I've also got things that can pull multiple different duties should I need them to. Rolled gauze, cling wrap, again, indispensable. Same thing with a pull tab. Sam Splint. If you don't know what these are, YouTube and Google are your friend. All right, I'll put this stuff away and we'll move on. Believe it or not, we still haven't gotten to the main body of the bag yet. So getting into the main body, I think we're gonna lay this one flat. Remember when I said overkill is underrated? Yeah, I'm sorry, I'm an idiot. This front pocket is kind of an advanced boo-boo kit. Moleskin, wipes, biohazard bag, eye wash, IVX. <laughs> if you are one of the millions susceptible to poison ivy, this stuff is wonderful. This is sting kill or kill sting. Uh, this is the stuff that, uh, oh gosh, what's the guy on Brave Outdoors who got bit by every bee? Uh, Coyote Peterson. He's the one that 
turn me on to this stuff and it does actually work. Bad tooth kit, broken tooth kit. If you're ever in that place, this stuff will make your life much less miserable. And then these are just eye patches. Okay, that's put away. This pocket is nothing overly exciting. Just some MPAs um, with some extra lube packets because there's always time for lubricant. Okay, moving on to, I guess, the more interesting areas. Yeah, you've seen them. I carry a lot of tourniquets because, again, I'm concerned about myself, my family, and then I have some specialty items in here. This, I guess we'll start off with, is a specialty tourniquet for a canine. Yes, they make them, I know, go figure. So I have one of these. Now, can you get by with a SWAT for a canine? You can, yep. Uh, but this is actually specifically designed and tested and works really well. And let me see if I can get the name in here. All right. Other than that, I have multiple, multiple, unfortunately. Uh, what do I have? Five. Four, I'm not quite as bad as I guess I thought I was, of uh, the soft T-wides. And I really like the soft T-wide. No tourniquet is perfect. None. I don't care what anybody tells you. They all have their drawbacks. I do like the soft T-wide because they fold down much flatter than the cat. And the cat can, oh boy, I'm going to stir a harness nest with this. The cat can have issues. If you are covered in mud or blood, the cats rely on Velcro and the Velcro can get clogged up. It's definitely possible. It's definitely happened when you're applying a tourniquet. Generally speaking, it's not in the best of circumstances. So I chose to go with these guys. Uh, mainly it's because they pack down so nicely where the cat is just quite a bit bigger up top. Three of the swats again i carry these because they're really small and they can be used for so many different things i love items that are not just single use i love items that can be used for just multitudes of issues two israeli bandages again swiss army knives quick clock gauze great stuff Watch the expiration dates. Standard gauze. Yep, it still works. Works really well. Pressure is your friend. That's what's going to stop bleeding. This is a gigantic package of bandages, trauma pads, chest pads. This is shrunk way down because there's so much in here, but this is four by sixes, five by nines. Uh, what's the great big trauma dressing I've got in here? I can't remember exactly how big it is, but it's big. More quick cloth. Pack of normal chest seals. And again, this is a specialty item again I was talking about. This chest seal works just fine on people, but this has been the one that has been the most recommended and reviewed for canines. It apparently sticks to fur the best, and well, <laughs> I'm pretty furry too, so really it wouldn't be bad for me either. And I think we have come to the end of my bag of medical goodies, other than how I have different cling wrap and tape all on a piece of paracord here that is just 
clipped in place. The reason I have that is because this can come off and go on my neck and then I'm not hunting for different cling wraps, tapes, anything. It's just right around your neck if you've got a quick wrap up a pressure dressing on somebody or bandage. It's right there. It's really convenient. So this is another very long video and this is everything that I have decided to carry that I feel I need. Now for you, could be completely different and that's okay. So hopefully you've got some help doing up your own kit. You guys, take care of yourselves, take care of each other. And I hope none of you ever need your kids.